Victoria Pendleton is the Olympic champion. The magnificent display of confidence, power and speed. The queen of the track delivers in China. I felt almost numb. And I thought, wow, I really thought this would feel different, like I'd suddenly be overwhelmed with an emotion and <laughs> I wouldn't be able to hold it back. And I didn't feel anything. It's hard to believe that I actually did it. Victoria Pendleton is the world's greatest ever female track cyclist. Olympic champion in Beijing 2008 and world champion in six of the past eight years, she has set the standards for a generation and dominated a sport that demands power, speed and bravery. I compete in a sport on an individual basis, but I never have done it for me. I was always cycling for my dad and then the coaches got bigger and my results got better and suddenly the responsibility grows and I'm doing it for somebody else. I'm doing it for a programme, I'm doing it for the country, I'm doing it for like everybody. You know, my success has got so great that it's like I'm trapped <laughs> almost within it. I'm going downhill way too fast and there is no brakes. <laughs> I can't stop. We followed her final season in the sport. The only thing that really matters to me is going well in London. That's all that matters. That's all I'm trying to do. I want it to be the most amazing exit that I could possibly have from the sport and say thank you very much and now I'm done. For me, Vicky's probably been the greatest woman sprinter of all time. If people could actually appreciate the hurdles she's overcome to, be, to do that, to achieve that greatness, yeah, they'd be amazed. And I don't suppose anyone can tell the full story apart from Vicky. The most joy I've had from that Olympic gold medal, I can honestly say, is popping it over some young kid's neck, round their neck, and they're just like, oh. It's like, remember this, Vic. This is what it's about. It's special when people get excited about something in that way. For Victoria Pendleton, the European Championships are the first of three major competitions she will race before she bows out at the London Olympics. She may have to battle her way through more than 10 races to win a gold medal during a long day of competition. It would be a gruelling schedule for a rider in great form and full of confidence, but Victoria arrives in Holland, devoid of both. Go through the process, don't get anxious. No. You're going well enough. Yeah. Last night you looked really, really looked good. Thank that you. Last night you looked really good. When I'm at competition, I spend a lot of time questioning myself, like, why do I put myself through this? It's one of my biggest flaws, is caring what other people think about me. I don't want to be a letdown. Take a big push from the back again. Yeah. Let me do the work. Yeah. You'll be all right. Yeah. Once celebrated as the queen of the boards, this is the first year since 2006 that Victoria has not been world champion. The individual sprint is a brutal examination of will, self-belief and often domineering tactics designed to expose the weaker rider in a one-on-one -on -one battle. It's a classic game of cat and mouse that ends with a pulsating sprint to the finish line. It is quite hard when you go to a championship and you're not in that perfect form, like the form you know you could be in or should be in. And people are still asking me, well, what went wrong? Why didn't you win? From a tactic point of view, that was really, really good. I'm really pleased with that. I think it's just sort of starting to dip. I always assumed the disappointment in other people rather than them actually displaying it. I just assumed it because that's how I felt about myself. So therefore everyone else must feel the same about me. She can do this, you've got to get in there. 
maybe I do kind of seek some kind of approval in the people around me. It really matters what they think. I want them to be proud of me and I want them to be pleased with what I've done and then that makes me feel good about myself. Cool. I know you want. The European Championships provide stark proof of how much work Victoria still has to do. Unconvincing both in qualifying and the early rounds, she is knocked out in the quarterfinals. For the Olympic champion, it's a devastatingly early exit. She has four months to prepare for her next competition, time that will be spent training and contemplating. I have a lot of nightmares about being chased and almost caught all the time. I can honestly say I know what that thing is that's chasing me. It's like got a big 2012 sign all across it. <laughs> Almost the old thing. A long way off. She was fighting. Oh, she did, yeah. She was fighting. Normally, over that last 25 metres, she tends to want it more than the others, and that's what's made it so great in the past. That's not been there today. It's up to us to rekindle it. It's quite surreal to think that I haven't grown up dreaming about doing this at all. It just happened. I never would have thought I was going to the Olympics. I quite enjoy sport, and now I'm Olympic champion. So, <laughs> that's a bit weird, isn't it? How old must be there? There's the embarrassing yellow tricycle there that still haunts me to this day. Um, my dad built like this carriage on the back of the tricycle so that Alex and I could both get carried along. The thing is, when you were sitting behind, everyone's pointing, going, oh, look at those two. You know, you're facing them, you're like, yeah, head down. Two little twins sitting <laughs> Two on the little back. twins on the back. I love these pictures with you on the, like, on the train or something like that. You we're look going so somewhere cheeky. like Great Ormond Street or something, aren't we? And Alex has got no hair. She was only four when Alex was diagnosed. I don't think Victoria could have really realised just how unwell he was. I mean, you can't talk about uh, potentially your, your, your twin brother dying. But for two, three years, you know, the whole of the family's attention, you know, grandparents included, was really on Alex. I think from there on, Victoria was vying for attention, and I think that was part of... made her so competitive in everything. My dad's always been a really keen cyclist. It's kind of his way of life. I've been watching him race as long as I can remember, so it was like inevitable that when I was old enough to race a bike in some format, I would be. It's the one all-round sport. Put two cyclists together into a race. You get the pleasure from beating people. <laughs> I think we're all, we're all competitive in this world, but I want to win everything. If he wasn't able to train, he got quite upset, uptight, wasn't a happy man. Wherever he went, the bikes went too, and if the bikes didn't go, Dad didn't go. It was a big part. Yeah. Every holiday. Yeah. All the weekends. Yeah. If I said he was a pushy parent, it wouldn't be a million miles away from the truth. You know, we'd go up some really massive hill somewhere and he'd ride away from me and, and I'd think, he's not even going to look back. He's not even going to look back to see if I'm coming. That was his way of encouraging me to do it. The car's over the next hill, you have to cycle over it. The sooner you cycle over it, the sooner we can get home. The wording is character building, isn't it? That's probably the way he was schooled. You know, it was all the stick all the way. It wasn't a carrot, it was a stick. And he'd enter me for races and I'd say, oh, I'm going to go to somebody's birthday party into the cinema. He'd be like, oh, suit yourself. And he wouldn't really speak to me. 
If I didn't do it, I felt like Alex was getting more attention from my father than I was, or somebody was, and I wanted it too. You know, I wanted to have something in common with my dad, and, and cycling's the only thing, really, that I have. She was following Alex down the back straight in a sprint when Alex was already going probably as quick as he could go. She basically moved out from behind him and overtook him and moved in in probably about six lengths. She just shot past him, just shot past him. Everyone always used to say how smooth your riding was. You know, like we used to be able to see you and you'd be completely smooth, like effortless. I think you still look that way. Aww. Especially when you compare yourself to some of your competitors. And that's when he realised there was something a bit different. I thought he was just saying that because he's my dad. That's what dads do. They have to say you're brilliant. <laughs> and you go, yeah, whatever. If he hadn't have pushed me at that age, I wouldn't necessarily be here now. You know, I wouldn't have stood out from the crowd. I am grateful that it has given me this fantastic opportunity to do something well. <laughs> Somebody's written on Twitter. <laughs> Lee Lee 16. I hope that's not his age. Anyway, good God, why do I like at V Pendleton so much? Question mark. I don't even like cycling that much. If she asked me, I'd say I loved it. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Victoria's performances on the grass tracks brought her to the attention of British cycling, but she opted for university instead before turning professional in 2002. When I started training with the team full time, the environment was not just a male environment. It was a very, very highly successful male environment. And there are multiple Olympic, World, Commonwealth medalists. They're not just the standard for the country, they're the standard for the whole entire world. I did struggle for people to take me seriously. I'm quite sort of slight, and for a sprinter, that's quite unusual. And I can still vividly remember her walking past me in her England skin suit, and I just sort of looked at her, her physique at the time and thought, there's no way this girl's a sprinter. We did have women cyclists, but they were quite, um, for what's for a better word, without getting shot by anyone that ever sees this. Yeah, they weren't as feminine, let's just say, in their appearance as Vicky. I did used to wear mini skirts sometimes with my GB top on the top and sparkly sandals and things, and the boys would be like, oh my gosh, this girl could not be serious. No, no, shoot from there up. There up. Quite a lot of women in sport tend to take on a very masculine, aggressive look. They want to be perceived as being something strong and powerful. I think I was quite comfortable. I never lost that sense of being female and wanting to retain my femininity. For me, I would never want to prove that I'm taking it seriously by making myself look different from the way I want to look. I wouldn't be myself. I'm going to win, and I want to win, and I'm going to have nice long hair, and I'm going to straighten it, and I'm going to curl it, and it's going to look lovely. Hi! How are you doing? British cycling success on the world stage has been rewarded with an influx of funding, sponsorship, and expertise at all levels. In the preparation of the athletes, nothing is left to chance. But do you not think that the fact that that wheel thing is totally squiff on the base a little bit annoying? It can be annoying, it doesn't make any difference if we call it, but we can strain it for you. A little bit. Victoria has now been training in Manchester six days a week for the last 10 years. But it's hard to imagine that in 2003, a year after she turned professional, there wasn't someone who could guide a British female sprinter learning her craft.